Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spanish 1010 at East Tennessee State University. Um, I am Matthew Harrison. I'm going to be your instructor for this semester. <laughs> I say semester. We're only here together for the month of June. We have about, and really the first week of July, we have about five weeks together. So I always like to make this video at the beginning of any course that I teach online, just because I know that sometimes in an asynchronous course like this where you never have any courses on campus and you never actually have to drive and meet your professor, sometimes it can feel um, a little distant. So I always like to make these videos just to let you know that there's a real person back here grading your papers and looking at all of your assignments. Um, each week I try to make a video or send out an email and keep you posted with important deadlines, announcements, and reminders. But especially at the beginning of the class, I always like just to walk through the syllabus with you, make sure you know my expectations, and make sure I try to answer as many questions as I can on the front end. So uh, this is our syllabus that you see here. And we're just going to run through all of it. It is 11 pages, uh, but most of that is the course calendar and the schedule. So just kind of bear with me. All this stuff is very important. And since we do just have five weeks, I want to make sure that I answer your questions early, um, early on in the semester. So my email address is here. Uh, it is harrisonmt1 at etsu.edu. Please don't forget the one there. Uh, there's another professor here at ETSU named Matthew Harrison who works in the one of the science departments, astronomy or physics or something, and when you forget the one, he gets my emails and he gets angry about that. So please make sure that you um, don't forget the one there. Uh, I included a Skype username here. Um, towards the end of the course, you'll be conducting an oral interview in Spanish where I ask you some questions and you have to respond, and we'll do that via Skype. So I like to give you my Skype username here, and you will need a Skype account. If you don't have one, you can make one. They're free, uh, very, very easy to do that. And I have some instructions later on showing you how to do that. So like I said, since this is a totally online course, I always like to give you my email address. And I do check my email regularly. Um, I always try to respond within 24 to 48 hours, usually closer to that 24 hour mark or less. Um, I basically live on my email. so. Uh, if you have a question, I try to get back to you quickly. Um, Spanish 1, Spanish 1010, is the first sequence in a series of courses of Spanish here at ETSU. So you're probably here either because you're a Spanish major, which is awesome, or a minor, um, or you're just getting a Bachelor of Arts degree, a BA, which requires that you take Spanish 1, 2, 3, and 4. So at any rate, if you've had Spanish in high school or you're already kind of familiar with the things that is typically taught, the things that are typically taught in Spanish 1, then you do have the option of taking a proficiency exam to test out of Spanish in place in either Spanish 1, 2, 3, or 4. Um, if you'd like to do that, it tells you here in the syllabus you can schedule an exam um, on this website. I believe you go to the library to take it, um, and you go through and answer a series of questions, speaking, reading, listening, and writing and you will be placed in one of these. So if you feel like you've been placed in the wrong course and maybe you already know the basics of Spanish or maybe you're a native speaker of Spanish, that proficiency test is available. Um, you can sign up for that in the library. That being said, the reason I told you that this is a series of courses in Spanish is because the textbook that we use, it's Exploraciones, and the ISBN number is here. You will use this textbook for Spanish 1, 2, and 3. There's a different textbook that you use for Spanish 4. Okay, but if you are a BA and you know that you're going to have Spanish 1, 2, 3, and 4, it's a lot cheaper for you just to go ahead and purchase the Cengage Unlimited Package. Okay, now it's a little confusing because it's called the Unlimited Package, right? But it only lasts for four months. That's a little strange. That's just your access um, to I, your... Um, certain chapters in the book, but your access to iLearn, the, the source that we're going to be using for this entire course and all the way through Spanish 1, 2, and 3, um, your access to iLearn is for 24 months, which should get you all the way through Spanish 1, 2, and 3, and then of course Spanish 4 will be a different textbook. Now, that's assuming that you are completing the courses sequentially, so you're taking Spanish 1, 2, and 3 
all back to back to back, either in a series of three semesters, or if you're taking Spanish one here in the summer with me, you're probably also taking Spanish two with me during the month of July. So you're just knocking them all out. Either way, the best thing for you to do is to purchase the, um, it is an ebook, meaning it's an online textbook, and it does come with iLearn access. So you can complete all of your assignments that way. So um, the link to that is here and the ISBN number is up here. Um, if you try to purchase the book used and you get like a hardback textbook on Amazon or Chegg or whatever source, it probably will not come with that access code. Okay, so your best bet is to go ahead and purchase uh, the unlimited package. I want to say it's like $199 and then that's really expensive. But um, that's a one-time fee, and it will get you through Spanish 1, 2, and 3. So you can think about it as a, a text that will last you for three semesters, essentially. So um, that's my suggestion. Um, it is your responsibility to get to purchase the book and the access code as soon as possible. Again, since we only have five weeks together, you do have a, some assignments due um, this week. Okay, so your very first week you have assignments due and lots of things to do. So... Uh, you really need to get the book as soon as possible. Okay, now, if you have financial trouble or you're waiting on financial aid or whatever the case might be, you do have an option to get a free three-week trial. Uh, and that trial account that you start on can go ahead and be converted later into uh, your real account once you've purchased the $199 unlimited access. So that is here for you if you need that. Just talk to me. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this stuff, okay? Uh, Liv Detweiler is at the Spanish Program Coordinator, and she is the one who helps students with iLearn access and helps them get uh, the free three-week trial. So um, you can reach out to her if you have any questions regarding the textbook, okay? Um, since this is an online class, you are going to need reliable online access, so... That means you need some kind of webcam or audio recording capabilities. That's just for our oral interview at the end that you need the video and audio capabilities. Um, you do have some assignments where you have to record yourself speaking in Spanish and I'll grade you based on your pronunciation. But the, the biggest thing here is for that video chat and auto, audio recording. Uh, most of us typically have smartphones in today's society. So if you download the Skype app on your iPhone, you can use that for your oral interview. That's, that's not a problem at all. I did tell you earlier that you need a Skype account, um, so I use that for office hours if anybody has questions. We also use it for your oral interview. You can just go to skype.com and create a username and password, and then we'll give you that, um, and then we can chat that way for your oral interview later in the semester. Um, here's some helpful websites to you for things that might be useful during the semester, just word reference as a dictionary, some helpful links to verb conjugations. I made some quizlets with flashcards for all of the chapters if you like to study your vocabulary that way. So all that's available. As far as how you're going to be graded, uh, we've talked about the oral interview that will take place on the very last day of class, as well as your final exam, which will take place on the last day. You do have weekly assignments that are broken up into textbook and ESAM assignments. Now, the reason that I have you purchase this iLearn Access that comes with our textbook is because all of these activities, your quizzes, your exams, your final, um, textbook and ESAM activities, all of that, basically everything that I've highlighted here, all that's going to take place in iLearn. And most of them will give you immediate feedback. So um, at, you get to practice with those activities each week. And You'll, you'll get an instant grade on most of those activities. There are a few of them where you write and I grade and stuff, but for the most part, you'll get instant feedback so you can see if you're doing something correctly or incorrectly and work on it before you take your quizzes and your exams, which I will grade. Okay, but those activities give you some practice before you're actually graded, so that's helpful. You do have the opportunity to redo those activities as many times as you need to to improve your grade, so there's really... Um, no reason you shouldn't have a hundred on those and they give you adequate practice for the quizzes and exams so if you're doing a good job and studying the textbook activities and the ESAM activities it should be easy to get an A on the quizzes and exam and then the final exam of course is just comprehensive with all those assignments now the compositions there's one that goes with chapter 2 
one that goes with chapter five, that's where you're actually going to write a couple of paragraphs in Spanish, and I'll grade you on your writing abilities. I'll send you those topics as we get a little closer in time, but those are there for you. This is the grading scale we're going to use. An A is a 93 to 100, a B is an 83 to an 86, C is 73 to 76, so on and so forth. Um, bear in mind, a C minus is the lowest grade that you can receive and still go on to Spanish 2. So if you get a D plus or below, you would have to repeat Spanish 1. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is just a description here of all those assignments I was just telling you about. I'm gonna skip over that for now. Uh, I do wanna emphasize that the use of translation software is prohibited. Okay, that is considered a form of cheating and plagiarism in the world language community. So please make sure you're not using Google Translate, you're not using any other kinds of software translation, SpanishDictionary.com, none of that stuff. Okay, um, I would much rather you try to say something and make an honest attempt and say it incorrectly than, um, you know, use a translator and say something totally wrong. So just keeping that in mind. Uh, I'll give you some more information on the oral interview later in the semester, and I have some information in D2L to help you with that as well. Um, I do not typically accept late assignments, especially in a course like this that only lasts for uh, five weeks. However, I do understand that things happen, and there are times in the semester when you know maybe you have something going on, or this is the summer and you're going to the beach. So I do have the course set up to where you have the ability to work ahead. Okay, but once the assignment is, uh, once it is officially closed on its due date, you'll not be able to go back and uh, redo that for credit. I do have it open so you can go back and do it and practice for the exams, but it doesn't give you credit. Now, if you have something catastrophic happen and you really just weren't able to get the assignment or whatever, um, I'm a pretty reasonable person and I'll do everything I can to work with you, but there are um, procedures in place for how much credit will be deducted in those situations and scenarios. Um, so that information is here for you as well. We've already talked about um, academic integrity and cheating, no translators. Um, if you have a disability, you need any kind of accommodations, let me know about that. You can just send me an email. Um, okay, so just some general information. Um, a lot of people haven't ever taken an online class before and people think, oh, hey, this is online. It's going to be so much easier. And unfortunately, a lot of the times that's not the case. Now, um, I am here to help you in every way that I can. Like I said, you have my email and my Skype. If you need me, I'm always there to answer your questions. Um, I do post weekly announcements and I also send you a weekly email kind of letting you know what's due for the week. Okay, um, but because this is a five-week class, it does require a little bit more work than a typical fall or spring class. So I always tell students to a lot around 40 hours a week in order to be successful, uh, whereas in a normal fall or spring semester, whenever you have 15 weeks to complete a course, you might get by with only spending 15 hours a week, including your time spent doing the assignments, the tests, the quizzes, the compositions, preparing for the oral interview, studying. Um, all of that in a traditional fall semester may only take you 15 hours a week, but because we're taking 15 weeks of content and we're scrunching it or condensing it into only five weeks, it goes really, really fast, okay? So I went a lot around 40 hours to watch all the videos, do all the assignments and practice, of course, if you ever have any questions about anything, please reach out immediately. Don't wait until Sunday night at midnight to answer to you know ask a question. Please make sure you stay on top of it early enough. Now, um, because I do know that this is summertime and you're going to the beach, and a lot of you guys probably have jobs and you have stuff going on, um, I have the course set up so that you can work ahead. Okay, so if you know that you're going to be on vacation during week two, go ahead and do all of week one and week two assignments during week one. You can work ahead, you just can't go back in time. Okay, so that should help you a little bit. Um, each week, you're basically going to log into our D2L site 
and I post important announcements there. And I have our site pulled up here. I just want to go ahead and kind of show you what to expect with that. Um, so when you get to D2L, it's just elearn.etsu.edu. You're going to log in using your ETSU username and password, which I'm going to do here for you now. Uh, when you first log in, you're going to see a little blurb that says summer 2019. If you need to scroll over, you can, but summer 2019, and then our course is here, Spanish 1010-901. When you log into our page, you can see um, news and important announcements here on the left-hand side from me. So I've given you a welcome message here, attaching the syllabus, and I've given you a link to our iLearn site, which is where you're going to be doing all of your assignments. D2L is just really here for us to communicate. Um, speaking of communication, you do have a content section here uh, where you'll see all kinds of important things. So our course syllabus is here and our course calendars. You can see all those due dates, put those in your phone calendar, set reminders so you don't forget. Uh, over here you have information on how to register your textbook, get access to uh, the ebook and access to all of your assignments. There's a little link here that tells you exactly how to do that with step-by-step -step instructions and uh, those are all here for you. Our course code is here. It is FKDK934. You'll need that as you're registering your account, so make sure you know where to find that. I'll also put that in my email that I send to you guys. And if you're anxious about the oral interview, don't be. It's not too bad. I give you the questions in advance. So you can see all of those here. You have a chance to read them and prepare for them. I will not ask you every question, just a select hand, um, handful. And then there's a grading rubric here if you want to see how you're going to be graded. Those compositions, there's information on those here. Information on how to do accents, the transitions for your writing, all of that's here. Up here under the communication tab, you will find um, a link for your discussion. Uh, your first week, you do have an introductory discussion that you can complete, um, introducing yourself to the class, telling us about yourself. If you click on that, I've given you an example discussion down here. I'd like to know como te llamas, what is your name? You're going to answer with me llamo in your name. So for example, uh, me llamo Prof Profesor Arison. Um, I'm asking you de donde eres, where are you from? You're going to answer with soy de, I am from, so soy de Kingsport, um, etc. And it tells you how to keep doing that. Now, a lot of people always worry about your grades as well. So even though all of your assignments are going to take place in iLearn, you will see all of your grades here under Evaluation and the Grades tab. And I'm going to switch to Student View here for a second. So you can, this will be what you see. Um, so again, Evaluation and Grades. You're going to see how you're graded each week, um, your iLearn activities, will be graded immediately and they will transfer over from iLearn here to the gradebook. Um, you'll have those activities for chapters one through five. Again, every week you have textbook and ESAM activities to complete. You have some quizzes in iLearn as well that I will grade. Um, I say quizzes. What I do, you have usually a couple of vocabulary quizzes for each chapter and a couple of grammar quizzes. So let's say you have four quizzes for chapter one, two vocab and two grammar. I'm going to average your score on all four of those, and that's what goes in the grade book. So you have 100, 100, a 95, and a 90. I'm going to add all those together and divide by four, and that average is your grade for your chapter one quizzes. And you'll have those um, every week. Same thing with your exams. Um, you do only have four exams. I did not give you an exam for Chapter 5. Since we only have five weeks in the class, I just incorporated all that content here in the final exam. So you'll have only four exams on Chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then your final exam will be comprehensive. So everything from here up, your exams, your quizzes, and your ESAM and textbook activities will all take place in iLearn, which I'll show you how to access in just a minute. Your compositions... Um, I'll email you the topic out later in the semester as we get closer to that. Um, and you will submit those compositions over here under, excuse me, the Evaluation and Dropbox screen. So on Dropbox, you will um, submit those here for those final compositions. 
you do have the opportunity to reach out to me and I can give you some preliminary feedback on a rough draft. If you would like to do that, I would be more than happy to give you feedback and tell you what you did well, what you need to work on, and that is non-graded feedback. You just have to email me um, sometime before the assignment deadline. I normally say 72 hours or three days, but I realize this is the summer and you're cramped for time, so um, I'll say 24 hours in advance or more, and I'll give you some feedback on that, okay? So you're just logging into D2L each week to read that new screen uh, look at any announcements or reminders. I'll post these videos on D2L for you as well, so you have those, and I'll also email them to you. But the big thing is you're going to log into iLearn um, to go ahead and read your book each week, to complete those textbook and ESAM activities, and to practice a little bit. Um, so you're wondering about this mysterious iLearn. So I'm going to tell you what iLearn is, and if you go to the site, it's hlc.kia.com. By the way, here in D2L on our homepage, I have that linked for you down here. So you can just click this link and it'll take you straight to our course website. So when you click that link, it's gonna take you here. Uh, you will have to log in using a username and password. And again, it will ask you for our course code. Okay, remember I've referenced that before, but our course code is um, FKDK934. So you'll see that um, when you log in and you actually click on our page. Sorry, I have a lot of windows open here. Let me get out of some of this stuff. Okay. Sorry, guys. This is what you're going to see when you log in and you click on our course site. This is the screen that you're going to see each week. So I have it selected on assignment calendar right now. I always like to view by date. Um, so you can see this coming Sunday, June 9th, you have all of these assignments due. Now, that looks like a lot. A lot of these are very short, little 30-second, one-minute assignments. But it is a lot. The T are your textbook assignments. Your quizzes are at the top, as well as your test or exam, also there at the top. Um, and as you go down, the assignments just continue. This is all of the textbook and ESAM activity, e activities together. You can see the textbook activities are in blue, and the ESAM activities are in purple. So the ESAMs here towards the bottom, textbook up there towards the top. Okay, so those are there for you. These are all listed on the syllabus towards the end in the course calendar if you want to see them all. But the cool thing about iLearn is that as you complete them, it's going to give you a check mark here showing you it's complete, and it's going to show you your score. Okay, When it's totally graded, it's going to give you a green dot next to it, and it'll show you your score. If it's something that I still have to grade, it's going to show you a red dot, but it's still going to have a check that it's completed, but you're going to see a red dot that, hey, Mr. Harrison has to go in and grade this. Okay, so you can see those under the assignment calendar. When you click on ebook, it takes you here straight to your textbook. Okay, obviously this week we are doing chapter one. So if you click on the little table of contents over here on the left hand side, you can click on chapter one, hola que tal. Um, and you can see everything here that you're gonna need to know for chapter one. It's all written out there. And so for example, I'm just gonna click on chapter contents so you can kind of see what to expect. Um, it loads everything here at the front you're going to be learning about. So school, some famous people, uh, the verb ser, the verb I, indefinite and definite articles, number and gender of nouns. It's all here. As you click this little arrow key, it's always going to take you to the next page. So here's your introductory vocabulary. You can always click the little link here to hear those aloud. Uh, but you have basic phrases like buenos dias, good morning. Um, buenas tardes, good afternoon. Buenas noches, good night. Uh, how are you? Como estas or como esta usted? So you get lots of good information here. Um, also, different rooms in school. So you have el salón de clases, the classroom, la bandera, the flag, la profesora, the female professor, or if you're like me, el profesor, male professor. Um, all kinds of good stuff in here. So I encourage you to flip through the book and read the whole chapter before you start any of your assignments. Those are all listed for you here. 
Okay, so I'm going to close out of that for now. Uh, your activities, if you want to see them on a different page, you can always click activities and it takes you to everything that you have assigned as well. Here's your first activity, for example. You have some self-test screen, so before you take your actual quiz or your exam, you can do a self-test. Um, uh, there's a pre and a post test. You can see how you do, and those are very similar to the real exam, so I strongly encourage you to do those. You also have a practice section down here, uh, which includes flashcards for all the grammar and vocabulary. It includes uh, verb drills for a lot of those activities, concentration games, crossword puzzles, anything you can imagine. All your resources are here for you to practice each week. Okay. And then finally, you have a media library over here. Uh, this just gives you some videos to watch explaining a lot of the vocab and the grammar concepts. Um, so those are here if you get stuck on any certain concept. Um, you can listen to those. These are just in addition to the YouTube videos that I make for you each week, just in case you need those. Okay, so that's iLearn in a nutshell. Again, I would always stay up here on the assignment calendar. Um, each, each week you can see what's due and it always tells you um, about that. So now I can hear, even though I can't see you and at this very moment, I can just feel the stress that you're probably thinking about all the stuff you have to do. So let's recap for a moment. You're going to log into D2L. You're going to look at the news each week, read your assigned pages in the textbook, and check iLearn to see what assignments you have to do. You're going to practice on iLearn with all those activities and complete all of those assignments. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. All right. Now, um, as we go down a little more, the rest of the syllabus just contains the course calendar. So for our first week, you can see everything that you're expected to read in the book, and I give you the page numbers of each item. Your to-do list is here for chapter one. It tells you to practice using the flashcards and self-test. Complete these activities in the textbook, which again are summarized there for you on that first page of iLearn. Your ESAM activities you need to complete in blue, those are also summarized there on the first page of iLearn. And your quizzes and your exams, also summarized there on the first page of iLearn. Okay, you do have an introductory discussion to do in D2L, and I showed you how to get there in D2L earlier in the video. If you've forgotten, just rewind the video and go back and rewatch that part. Um, now, all of these things have certain due dates, okay? Now, because this is an online class and it's really easy to get behind, I've specified some certain dates that you need to complete all of these things by, okay? So, um, those are always here. So, I recommend completing the textbook activities by June 5th, the ESAM activities by June 6th, quizzes by June 7th, and exam by June 8th. And then your introduction, of course, is due by June 9th. Now, None of, or sorry, June 3rd. None of these are actually late until after June the 9th. So you could decide that you want to wait until Sunday, June 9th, to start all these things and do them all at that moment. But my experience has been students that try to watch all the videos and learn how to do this and complete all these assignments, um, it's just not possible to do all of it in one day with everything that you have to do squeezed into five weeks. It's just not possible to do it all in one day. And if you accomplish it, you probably didn't score very highly. So I've spaced it out. You'll notice it shows it's you should complete it by June 5th, but it's not officially late or officially due until June 9th. You should complete it by June 6th, but it's not officially late or officially due until June 9th. And these things are always laid out for you here. Okay, and it continues. Here's week two, week three, week four, week five, and it's all here. It tells you um, the dates of your final exam, the dates of your oral interview, um, and I'll be sending out a Google Doc for your oral interview and let you pick the time you want to do it on July 1st. Okay, it gives you deadlines for non-graded feedback on those writing assignments. It gives you the deadline for the writing assignments here. Um, all those are available on this course calendar, okay? And then in addition to that course calendar, I also created, I'm a visual person, so I created this visual calendar for you. So you can see all of this kind of summarized in a doable format. So if I were you, I would just print this out, 
thumbtack it up on your wall and follow this for the summer. So here's our first week on Monday. You need to enroll in the course on iLearn, get the textbook, and introduce yourself on D2L. Uh, Tuesday, read chapter one and watch all these video lectures that I've created for you um, and all the ones on iLearn. On Wednesday, do your textbook assignments, those ones that are listed in green on the tentative course calendar we were just looking at. Thursday, do your ESEM activities, the ones that are listed in blue on our course calendar. Friday, do your two quizzes. Um, each day, I'm going to be going in and grading these things, so if you're doing something wrong, I'm going to be grading that and showing that for you, okay? Um, on Saturday or Sunday, go ahead and take your Chapter 1 exam and wrap up the Chapter 1 week, okay? Then you can hop into Chapter 2. Go ahead and start reading Chapter 2 and watch those video lectures. Okay, and then it just continues each week. You can see I've told you when to start working on your first composition. It's due on the 14th of June. You can, you know, get me, uh, send me an email with a rough draft and I'll be glad to grade that for you. And then once you, or give you non-graded feedback. And then once you're ready to have it officially graded, just drop it in the Dropbox that I was showing you earlier. Okay. Those are all here. The date for your oral interview is July 1st. Uh, that's a Monday. If for some reason that day doesn't work for you, just reach out to me and let me know, and I will be glad to assist you with that. Okay. Hopefully that answers most of your questions about our class, guys. And if there's um, anything that you still need help with or anything that you still have questions about, feel free to reach out to me about those things anytime, but I think you'll find that it's all pretty well organized here in D2L and iLearn, so it should be pretty easy for you to knock out a lot of this content pretty easily, okay? That's all I have for you. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Have a great day, everybody.